All right, let's bring in Mike Davis. Mike, thanks for being with us on this important day. Let me just start by asking this. Give me your synopsis of the closing arguments of the defense and the prosecution, and just take it from a purely analytical standpoint. Do, what did each side do well? So I think that, that President Trump's team did a very good job of explaining to the jury that there is no crime here. President Trump did not commit a crime. It is not a crime for a businessman to settle a nuisance claim. That is routine for business people. If that were a crime, there would be a lot of business people in jail. There's all, it's also not a crime for a presidential candidate to, quote, try to scheme to influence the election, which is apparently now the second so-called crime, non-crime, that Trump committed to turn these uh, bookkeeping misdemeanors, they're not even bookkeeping misdemeanors because a legal expense is a legal expense. I don't know what else you would call it, but to transform these time barred bookkeeping misdemeanors from 2017 into felonies, Alvin Bragg and Matthew Colangelo, this, this Biden political operative, had to come up with a legal theory where Trump somehow committed a second crime to cover up his first alleged crime of putting uh, in his books in 2017 this this nuisance this payment of this nuisance claim somehow that 2017 bookkeeping entry in his private books was somehow uh, a a business bookkeeping violation and that business bookkeeping violation somehow affected the 2016 campaign even though it was in 2017 so i think president trump's Attorneys did a very good job of explaining there was not a crime. They also did a good job of eviscerating uh, the, the so-called star witnesses, Michael Cohen, the serial perjurer, disbarred attorney, felon, and even admitted to embezzling $60,000 from Trump and Stormy Daniels, who's changed her story several times, like Michael Cohen. They're both raising money online. Uh, Stormy Daniels through her pinned porn site on Twitter, Michael Cohen through uh, his TikTok page trashing Trump. I think that Trump's attorneys did a very good job of destroying what little credibility those two had. So even if there were a, a crime, Trump didn't commit that crime. They have no evidence that Trump committed that crime. But unfortunately, Sean, I don't think that's going to be enough. I don't think with this uh, corrupt partisan. Well, let, let's just. Process, I want. I want to. I want to get to your analysis in a second. But just. I, and again, I just trying to be as neutral as you can be, as analytical. What did the if you're if you're looking at this straight on from a legal standpoint, did the prosecution? What were their positives? Well, I, I mean, I obviously I'm a Trump supporter, so right. it's hard for me to do this, but I'll try to be objective as an attorney. You know, I I don't honestly I don't think that they did an effective job making their case. They spent over five hours in their closing arguments, and they're just now coming up with their legal theory. In the closing argument, after the the allegations, after the motions to dismiss, after the trial, after the witnesses, after the defendant's closing arguments, they're just now coming up with the legal allegations against President Trump, which is is just blatantly unconstitutional. That you wouldn't tell the criminal defendant what he must defend against until at the very end, when there's no opportunity for him to to say another word. Uh, but they they did a good job of cobbling together their bogus legal theory. And the problem is, is this Democrat Manhattan judge, Juan Mershon, has let them cobble together their, their this bogus legal theory where this judge who donated to Biden, illegal, illegal campaign donation to Biden that got him reprimanded by the New York judicial system, whose adult daughter, Lauren Mershon, is raising millions of dollars off this case. This judge Mershon is conflicted under New York statute. He has to recuse. He's refused. Instead, he's threatened to throw Trump in jail if he points out these conflicts. It's so and, not. I can't believe people are pissed off about Mrs. Alito flying a flag, and yet this guy's daughter's making millions of bucks, and they're like, "Yeah, no problem." I, I, I want to ask you though, like, what, what is, what, what should did the Trump? And I get where you are, but I'm just objectively speaking. I've, I've listened to a lot of these pundits. Did they, did the Trump team miss an opportunity or someone on CNN and others are saying that by bringing up Stormy Daniels, that was a mistake. Uh, is there anything that you think that maybe they missed the mark on? No, I'm not. I think they've done a very effective job. Trump, President Trump has a very good legal team with loyalists, with, with very seasoned, experienced trial attorneys and Supreme Court advocates who make, who are preserving the legal issues for appeal. Look, there's no chance Trump's going to 
get a fair at best there's a hung jury i don't even think there's going to be a hung jury here i think president trump's going to be found guilty in this partisan rigged corrupt process uh that was orchestrated by this manhattan judge juan Mershon, like i said whose daughter's raising millions off of this criminal trial he has judge Mershon has to deliver for biden because he knows if he does not deliver for biden democrats lauren Mershon is going to not get these millions of dollars in contracts from Biden Democrats. She's going to be destroyed in the, in the Democrats' fundraising and consulting business. So Juan Mershon has a direct financial stake in this cr unprecedented criminal trial over which he's presiding. He, know, he knows he has to deliver. You have a, a partisan Soros-funded Manhattan DA, Alvin Bragg, who campaigned on getting Trump. You have Matthew Colangelo, a former top Biden Justice Department political appointee. He was the acting number three on the parachute team. He worked for the Obama White House. He uh, worked for the Obama Justice Department. He worked for the Obama. You can't make this wrap up. I mean, honest to God, I yeah, cannot. Was, I feel like this is a bad episode of like if somebody brought this to Hollywood, the writers would be like, "Listen, this is way over the top. We can't yeah. like you got to tone it down." Let me. I I will say this as you're talking. I'm thinking to myself. Somebody should take note today or tomorrow, if he's found guilty, how many fundraising pitches Judge Marchand's daughter sends out on behalf of her clients? Yeah. I think just that goes to prove the point, they were dying to make money. Um, one of the things that I find fascinating is this additional so-called charge. Um, the Trump campaign, as I understand it, or excuse me, Trump team, was not allowed to bring in like an FEC, a Federal Election Commission expert to say, no, this doesn't actually constitute a violation of federal election law. Here's why the FEC passed. Here's why the DOJ passed on ever charging with anything. Why weren't they allowed to do that? Well, that's a very good question. And I would say this just objectively as a general matter, generally you have the, the judge uh, instruct the jurors on the law. That's the judge's job. But when you have these very complex legal issues, it may have been a good time to call in an expert, even if they're not advising on the specifics of the jury instructions, just in general about how, how campaign finance law works. But the problem with Judge Mershon's ruling, where they exclude it, where he excluded Brad Smith from coming in, the former FEC Chair. chairman, it, uh, the problem is, is they, that this judge let the prosecutors uh, uh, let Michael Cohen testify about his legal opinions on campaign finance law. So, I mean, if you're going to, if you're going to let the prosecutor, uh, so is that, is that grounds for appeal? I mean, I can't is, understand the jury yeah. should know that. Right. I mean, I, 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 I know enough. I mean, I've been doing campaigns since, since the nineties. I mean, I know, I, I don't have a law degree, but I know enough about the law that I'm like, why can't he explain that this is not an issue? Yeah, look, th there are so many reversible errors in this corrupt partisan rigged trial by Judge Mershon and Alvin Bragg and Matthew Colangelo. This, th w if and when the jury finds him guilty and Mershon convicts, this will go on appeal. There is no doubt that the appellate courts will reverse this criminal conviction because it was. It's just. It's. So, it, it's so illegal and unconstitutional on so many different levels from not explaining what the legal allegations are against the defendant to illegally unconstitutionally gagging the defendant while they let the star witnesses trash the defendant that puts the that turns the gag orders on its head gag orders are supposed to protect criminal defendants not to muzzle them when they're speaking out against a partisan corrupt and rigged process i mean it's just there, there's no evidence to support the that, that trump committed any crime uh, even if they allege a crime, there's no evidence that Trump committed any crime. It, there's just so many issues that will certainly get this conviction reversed on appeal. The problem is this, and the Democrats know this. They're they're going by the old polling and the old playbook. They think if they get Trump convicted, if Mershon delivers, uh, you know, so he, his daughter doesn't get fired from my Democrat campaign consulting and fundraising, if Mershon delivers and Trump is labeled a convicted felon, these Biden Democrats think that that's going to hurt Trump in the general election on November 5th. The problem is, is that the American people understand now, uh, in big part, thanks to the Article 3 project, projects, 3,500 plus media hits over the last 23 months, constant social media, constant opinion pieces. The American people understand, according to the polling, 
that this is obviously Biden Democrat lawfare and election interference, and it's going to backfire on them as we've predicted for the last 23 months. I was listening to that um, interview this weekend with um, Dennis Quaid, and he was saying the same thing. Mean, he was like, yeah, I, I've seen enough of the lawfare. And I think a lot of it, to your point about Article 3 and you and being out there is explaining it to people what's what's happening. You brought up the jury. Um, there is some reporting by a reporter named Mark Caputo's at the Bulwark. And he he writes about one particular juror and he says, this this person, this on the juror, has appeared to nod along in seemingly in seeming accordance with the defense at times and lit up when JD Vance and some other high profile surrogates showed up at the courthouse. Another insider pointed out the juror could barely surpass suppress a smile when Blanche, that's Trump's attorney, appeared to trip up Cohen on the witness stand during a heated exchange. How much should we read into, you talked about the jury, that some juror subscribes to True Social, some jurors nodding along. Is this just pundits buying time or is this actually, is there something there? There might be something there, but think about that. If you have an 87% Biden voter jury pool in Manhattan and then Judge Marshawn and, and Alvin Bragg and Matthew Colangelo further rigged the jury selection process by weeding out the three people in Manhattan who follow Trump on social media, or you know, whatever it is, a handful of people, a very small number, and did not weed out the Biden people who follow him on social media. So it's it's already stacked against Trump, and then, then it was further rigged, and then the trial was corrupt, corrupted by a judge who should have recused because his daughters were fundraising off the case, and then it was further rigged in these jury instructions where this judge has said, you know what, jurors, you don't even have to agree unanimously what the second supposed crime or misconduct was that Trump committed that turned these alleged bookkeeping misdemeanors that are time barred somehow into these 34 felonies. You don't have to uh, uh, unanimously agree what that second crime is. Just make up one, whatever you think. If, if, if four of you think it's a federal election crime, go with that. If four of you think it's a state election crime, go with that. If four of, if four of you think it's something else, go with that. As long as you know, you just unanimously find Trump guilty. It doesn't matter how you get there. I mean, it's just, it's a rigged, corrupt, partisan process. And it's pretty bad that Trump's only hope right now is that one out of the 12 jurors might say, no, I'm not going to vote to find him guilty here. But guess what? If it's a hung jury, guess what happens, Sean? Then Colangelo and Bragg and Mershon immediately send Trump to a retrial and keep him in trial again for the next two or three months yeah. instead of on the campaign trail. Well, all right. Why are they making him stay in the courtroom during deliberations? I thought like when I watch Law and Order, they all go hang out somewhere and then someone comes and runs and says the jury's back. Why are they making him stay in the courtroom? That's a very good question. I don't know why he has to be in that courtroom. I guess he has to be ready just in case the jury's- But, but I mean, like, I don't get it. Like, what is that normal? I've never, I again, my courtroom experience is watching TV. I've never seen the the- defendant be forced to stay in a room. Yeah, I, I, you know, I've been a, an attorney for 20 years. I've represented clients in civil trials and criminal trials. I've never heard of a, a defendant having to sit in the courtroom while right. the jury deliberates. Uh, maybe there's something pat uh, particular to New York law of which I'm not familiar. Maybe there's something that's maybe these are special proceedings for President Trump because it seems like these Biden Democrat <laughs> Why not? and judges and, and witnesses would much rather have Trump stuck in a courtroom because they know how effective he right. is when he goes out to the sticks. Okay, so let me just, I have two things I wanna to get to you with. One is, so what, what is the outcome? What do you think ultimately happens? It sounds to me you're convinced this is gonna be a guilty verdict. I, I am convinced that this partisan, corrupt, rigged process will result in an unjust, guilty uh, verdict against President Trump in a criminal conviction, I think, that this judge may even try to put President Trump in prison. And selfishly, as a political hack, I kind of hope that Mershon is that stupid because right now Trump is going to win by probably one or two points. If they try to put him, if they convict him, I think it's going to be three or four points. And if they try to put him in prison, it's going to be landslide territory, like five or six points. I, I just, I, I Anyway, I, I'm so disgusted by this. This is why I love having you on because you really can explain to make sure that I don't feel like I'm completely whacked when my lack of legal experience clashes with the reality of what's happening. The last thing I want to ask you is un-Trump related. President Biden this weekend visited um, Haley Biden, who was 
Bo's wife that Hunter started dating, to be PG on this. <laughs> um, Hunter is going to start his trial soon. Is that inappropriate? And she's going to testify is why it matters. So just the last thing I want you to touch on, is that an inappropriate witness tampering thing? Or is that just, hey, I get to visit. She's still the uh, the mother of my grandkids. I wanted to visit her. Yeah, it sounds like witness tampering and obstruction of justice, or at least that needs to be investigated. Has President Biden ever visited her in her house before? How <laughs> often? When? Uh, why now? Why right before Hunter Biden's trial? He, Hunter Biden, uh, Joe Biden likes to blame uh, his son's death for everything that he does, every mistake that he makes. And he's trying to say that he wanted to go visit his former daughter-in-law, who was married to Bo and then started hooking up with Hunter. And then Hunter is on trial for a gun charge right now in Delaware. And the president of the United States brings his entire Secret Service entourage and shows up at her house at like eight o'clock at night, several days before she's going to be a key witness in, in Hunter Biden's criminal trial. It, it doesn't look good. And I, I hope and expect that the prosecutors will ask her about her conversation, what was said, what was done, what was signaled by President Trump uh, President in this private, uh, completely unusual meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Just complete coincidence. I never do this except right before he's facing trial. Mike Davis, always appreciate it. Thanks for all the work that you and Article 3 are doing on this. Thank you, Sean. You bet. All right.